Welcome into sportsbookreview.com. My name is Christopher Giannini, and this is your week number six college football big game preview. Before we get into the games, let me tell you about sportsbookreview.com. It is your number one stop for all of your gambling needs. They have everything you could possibly imagine there. They've got all the odds. They've got all of the, the, the different spreads and lines for every sport going on right now across the world. It's incredible. It makes it super easy to find lines. It makes it super easy to see which sports book has the best line on the best game. So you don't have to shop around. You can just go to one place. They do it all for you. They also have articles. People far smarter than me, far more intelligent than me can, can tell you analytics breakdowns a little bit better on so many different games. They've got baseball. They've got basketball. They've got football. They've got hockey. We got it all going right now sportsreview.com go there check them out let's get into this week's show the biggest game of the weekend is in kinnick stadium at iowa and man i cannot tell you how excited i am about this football game this two top five teams these are probably in my opinion I would say number two and three in defense in the country about to go after each other. I would have Georgia clearly number one. Um, defensively, they don't get a whole lot better than these guys, okay? Offensively, they're both built different, but they seem the game seems to find its way to play out the same. Iowa scores on defense. Iowa scores on special teams. Penn State puts you in bad positions and capitalizes from mistakes that the offense makes. That way their offense doesn't have to drive long fields. They both are not afraid to take big shots, try to catch defenses off guard. I don't know that they're going to have the opportunity to do that this weekend. I, I can't wait to see it. I assure you this might be a low-scoring game, but it will not be a boring football game. There's a big difference between watching two teams that can't score and watching two teams that won't let you score. Big difference. Super excited. Sportsbook Review says I've got to make a pick on all these big games. And, man, this is the one week I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it at all. I am I am giving you my pick for these big games. Do with it what you will. I don't have a single nickel on any of these big games. Well, I've won. One I've got. We'll get to that later. Uh, See, I just I started this thing off. Everything was going smooth. And then I realized I told you a lie. I got it on too. This game, I don't. I'm super excited about it. Iowa laying two points at home. Total is 41. Pretty damn low total. I still think it goes under unless we get a couple of defensive scores. I just don't see anybody scoring in this game, guys. It's just going to be really hard. I think if you make me take a pick, I'm going to pick the home team. I, I think I made my mind up this week that I'm just going with the home team. If this game was in Happy Valley, I would be picking Penn State. It's at Iowa. They're going to wave to the kids. The, the, the place is going to be packed out. Look, they like to do whiteouts at Penn State. This place is going to be blacked out. They're probably not because they don't like doing that because it doesn't show up on TV real well, so they wear a lot of the yellow. Uh, but either way, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. Iowa's going to be hopping. I think if you made me pick between Kurt Ferentz or, or uh, um, oh my goodness gracious, his name has been coming up for like a million jobs, and I just went blank. This is what getting old is like, man. Don't get old, guys. Just, you know, never mind. I was just about to say something pretty terrible. I'm Googling real quick because I'm a moron. James Franklin. I the only name that was coming to my mind right now, I know this was terrible television, but I'm just going to give it to you anyway. The only name that was coming to my mind was Jamie Chadwell because I knew it started with a J and it was a GA. James Franklin. I apologize to Mr. Franklin. He's a hell of a coach. With that being said, I, I, I'd still take Ferentz right now. I'd take this team right now. Maybe I wouldn't take Ferentz over him. I'd take, I'd take this team right now. I think they're incredible, and uh, I just made up my mind. I, I'm going to go with the home team. Moving on. Spent way too much time rambling, looking up something that I should have known already because I'm an idiot. Let's get to a game that I'm super pumped about, and I absolutely have a side on this one. This is a Red River rivalry, guys. This is Oklahoma. This is Texas. This is at the State Fair where you can get 
unlimited amounts of fried food on sticks. There's going to be half the field is going to be in whatever that red color that Oklahoma calls and this rusty burnt orange. And it looks really cool on television. And the game is always great. Even when Oklahoma is a juggernaut, I've brought this up on the opening line show. All the years that Oklahoma is a juggernaut, they still struggle to beat Texas. They have had many, many seasons where they made it to the playoffs or got to a big game, bowl game, or whatever, and they finished 11-1. and That one was always Texas. Texas was a thorn in their side for a while. I think Texas this time is the better football team. I really, really do. Now, I know the stars on the back of the talent of the, of the, of the jerseys of all the players that are going to play in this game don't, don't agree with that. I, I, think, I think Texas is just flat out the better team. I'm getting a head start with points. I like that. I think Texas is going to win the game outright. Um, and and I, I like Texas in this game. Texas catching three and a half. Oklahoma laying three and a half. The total 63 and a half. You could you could talk me into both ways. Texas defense has been much much improved. Oklahoma's defense has been non-existent. I'd probably go over if I had to play that, but I'm staying away from it. I love the side so much. I want one big play on this game, and I want it to be the Longhorns. If Oklahoma comes out and plays great in this game, hear me now. It will be the first time all season that they've looked great, and I think they're going to have to look great to win this game. I haven't seen it yet, and we're going into week six. It ain't like we're going into week three, okay, and we've only seen them play twice. They kind of haven't looked impressive against anybody, and that's sad because, I mean, I guess they got a couple of pay-for wins, but but even the pay-for win against Tulane wasn't, wasn't great. It wasn't anything impressive. So, give me Texas. We'll move on. <clears throat> Next big game I got, we're going to the Plains. We're going to Auburn. One of... One of the most incredible atmospheres that you're going to see all weekend is going to be the crowd at Auburn bringing Georgia in. They've been playing this game for over 100 years. This is the oldest rivalry in the South. I was shocked when I saw the line. Auburn is catching 15 points at home. And I was trying to think, when is the last time Auburn's caught that many points at home? And I wonder if some of those Iron Bowls got that high and I just don't remember it. But that's got to be the only list because even when Auburn plays Bama at Bama's heights at the Plains, the line usually isn't this big. And my first thought was, is, man, that's too many points. Well, that's not true. My first thought when I saw the line was that ain't enough points because Georgia has been killing everybody. Now, as the week has gone on, it's kind of growing on me that there's too many damn points. And I just wonder – can Auburn have any pride? This is a home game. We have seen Auburn, we've seen magical things happen on the Plains, okay? We've seen the prayer at Jordan Air. If you hadn't seen it, please Google it, YouTube it. It is unbelievable. It's one of the greatest endings to a football game. That same season was the exact season for the kick six against Alabama. We've seen remarkable, magical, special things happen in big games on the Plains. They have all the momentum going in. Well, They've got momentum good and positive in their light. They don't have all the momentum because Georgia, Jesus, man, this team is, I've said it, I've said it since week one. They're the best team in the country. I don't think Auburn's in danger of winning this game. Can they not lose by three scores? I don't like this game. I would not make a pick on this. You make me make a pick. I'm going to take the points. I'm going to take Auburn. Hear me when I say this. Just like the Iowa Penn State game, I I could be talked into either side, and I would feel perfectly fine with either way I had it. I, that's probably not true. The way I should say that is, I would probably hate either way I have it. If if you made me take Auburn, I'd I'd probably hate it, but I'd do it. If you made me take Georgia, I'd probably hate it, but I'd do it. The total here forty five and a half. Um, I think that's a I think that's a good number. I think that's a, a right number, and I've got no feel. I wouldn't touch it at all. Moving on. Oxford, Mississippi. My Rebels from Ole Miss are hosting Arkansas. Both of these teams were undefeated going into last weekend. 
both of these teams made themselves known to the rest of the country before then. Unbelievable stories. Have some good wins. Have some big-time national TV presence where they have looked remarkable. Both of these teams went up against Juggernauts at home, the number one and number two team in the country. I don't think it's close, by the way. I think there's a sizable gap between them. And both of these teams got ran over like a freight train. Did we learn anything from either one of them? Before those games, I would have taken Ole Miss is laying six. The total 66 and a half. I would have laid the points with Ole Miss before I saw those games and now I don't know what to think. I I don't I don't know if Ar- I'm assuming Arkansas is going to score this week because Ole Miss is about as far from Georgia as I am from catching Usain Bolt in a track race. But I, it's so hard that I just saw them look so bad. Ole Miss I didn't see look bad. I think they just got the hell beat out of them. Their offense moved the football. They just didn't move it enough. And, uh, man, everything in me wants to, wants to stay with my Rebels. But I, I think Arkansas has been one of the most impressive teams of the year, beating Texas, beating Texas A&M. And I think those teams are comparable to Ole Miss. I might be wrong on that. Give me the Rebels. Give me the Rebels at home, minus six. I'm not touching the 66 and a half because right now neither one of these teams look like they could score last weekend. Arkansas's defense is unbelievable unbelievable and I wonder can they give Lane Kiffin and the boys down in Oxford any problems very curious to see that I'll be watching that game it is your CBS 230 game 230 in the Lord's time zone I'm in the central time zone game of the week this is Alabama going to Texas A&M 100,000 screaming Aggie fans are going to be there that place is going to be insane and Alabama is laying 17 and a half points to Texas A&M. Total 51. I don't think this is enough points. I just don't. I don't like this Bama team because they bully me and they 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 ruin my weekend week in and week out for years, decades. But I don't think this is enough points. I would love to be wrong here. I think this it with Alabama outside of when they play Georgia the number has to start around 19 and then go from there. And and if we're not close to the 20s, which I guess 17 and a half is close to 20, but it's it's not there yet. I, I just don't know that it's enough points. I think this team is is a juggernaut, and when they get loose, they're just really, really tough to beat. I'm going to take Bama in that one. That's all I've got. I, I just don't have any other analysis this A&M will look better than they looked against Mississippi State. That's hard to say because they just played State, and now they're playing Alabama. They will figure something out defensively. They they might have a few wrinkles for Alabama that might slow them down. I think the crowd noise could give the offense problems. Florida's crowd noise gave the offense problems a couple weeks back. My my issue is is I don't know what A&M does on offense. I, I just don't know. Mississippi State's defense gave you troubles. This Alabama defense going to give you fits. I don't know how they put points on the board. I love Jimbo. I do. I've made that clear. I, I don't. I thought before the last two years that Jimbo was a hell of a coach. And I thought he had a chance to compete for the West. And I've just been wrong on that maybe. I don't know. If Alabama wasn't in the picture, let's, let's say just Thanos snapped his thumbs and Alabama doesn't exist anymore. They're still not close to winning the West. They're just not. I, I just think maybe they're the third best team. Um, and, and, and so while everybody else, they're closer to those teams, I'd still right now today take Ole Miss over them. I'd take Auburn over them. I think that's pretty clear. I think my LSU Tigers is probably a coin flip with them. Um, and that's, that's not good. That's not good if you're Texas A&M. So give me the tide. I hate that. Let's move this thing along, guys. We're going to hit some rapid-fire games. I'm going to try to go quick. Not that we're in a hurry, but these are these are just not as big of games, but they're, they're other games that we're going to hit on. And, uh, and we're going to start out my neck of the woods. I think this is a Thursday night game. 
Jonesboro, Arkansas. This is about an hour, 45 minutes, hour, 30 minutes if you drive pretty crazy like I do sometimes. Down the road from me, we're going to Arkansas State. And my boys from Coastal Carolina coming in town. My buddy, James Chadwell, is coming to town. And Coastal Carolina is laying a big number on the road in one of these weeknight games. 18 and a half points. Woo, good golly, Miss Molly. That's a lot of points, guys. That's a lot. The old saying has been all year, for the last several years, weeknight home dogs, play them, close your eyes, hit the button, be blind, walk away. Last week, both home dogs lost outright, which is fine. Both of them got destroyed, did not cover. The road teams, the favorites, covered. Doesn't happen very often. Hasn't happened in a long time where both of them had that. And uh, I think we're going to get one more this weekend. I just do. I, th- I think this Coastal Carolina team, when they don't want you to score, you don't score. If you go look at the opponent scoring against them, it's a, it's pretty damn low. Okay, Now, Butch Jones, I do think, has Texas A&M. A&M. Whoa, I've still got Jimbo in my head, guys. Arkansas State. They're, they're very up and down. They'll have weeks where they, man, they'll hang 35-40 on somebody, even some pretty good teams. And, and then they'll have weeks where they're going to struggle to get into the end zone at all. If you're not on your best week against Jamie Chadwell, you're getting roasted. He's just going to run you out of the stadium. I, I, less than 20, give me the shots. Give them to me. I'm taking them all. I'm taking my guy, Jamie Chadwell. Next game up, I got Temple going to Cincinnati. Now, this is your classic uh, upset. Uh, not really upset. Kind of can't see Cincinnati losing this damn game. But possibly, you know, feeling too much about themselves and 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 a little bit of too much pride. You know, you just beat Notre Dame. Now the rest of your schedule should be easy. The rest of the season should go pretty smooth. All you got to do, don't make any mistakes, win out, and you got a shot at doing something none of the little guys have been allowed to do ever. Can you beat somebody by 28, though? Are you allowed to take a breath, see what's in front of you, and see, I'm just going to win these games. I'm just going to, it's okay to beat somebody by 14. It's okay to beat somebody by 17. Clearly dominate the football game. Get some other guys some reps. Make sure our starters don't get hurt. <clears throat> We've got a couple of bigger ACC, AAC games coming up. Let's just, you know, win the game handsomely. But not by 28, because that's a difference. Now, Temple's terrible. Temple just beat my Memphis Tigers. And that's not Temple's fault, by the way. That's my Memphis Tigers' fault. They're a trash football team. You go to Philadelphia, you embarrass us like that. That's you know, It's a damn shame. Temple's a bad football team, guys. They're, they're just bad. I got to make a pick because that's the rules of the show. I'm laying all 28 points. I don't like it. I wouldn't touch this game to save my life. Moving on, going a little quicker. Michigan going on the road to Nebraska. Whoo, Nebraska looks like they're back. They beat up on my Northwestern Wildcats. But those Wildcats are dead to me. And they looked dead on Saturday. I don't think they're a good football team. I don't know what the hell's going on in Northwestern. Nebraska has figured some things out. Nebraska playing better. Michigan hasn't trailed in a football game the entire season and just looks to be trucking along. Can Big Red show up at home on a Saturday and and affect this game? Can this crowd get under hardball skin and, and this Michigan's dominating performance? And, and slow them down a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to take Michigan. I'm going to lay the points. And I kind of feel pretty good about it. But I've been a hardball defender, God, since since I've known the man in coaching. So I'm, I'm not going to stop now. Next game, Maryland, Ohio State. 21 points, Ohio State laying to Maryland at home in the horseshoe. 
Total, 69 and a half. I like the over in this game. I know that's a lot of points. I like the over. I think Maryland gets back to scoring, guys. When you just got the hell beat out of you by Iowa, and then you go play a defense like Ohio State, it it's like a breath of fresh air, okay? <clears throat> that That's not necessarily a knock on Ohio State as much as it is Iowa is just that good. I mean, if you just got playing, you know, some 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 small school from the middle of nowhere that didn't play defense at all, and then you play Ohio State, it, it might feel like running into a brick wall. It's all about perspective. You just ran into the brick wall, and now you just got to run through, like, a, a pile of leaves. I think they'll be able to score. Also, this is a narrative thing for the pick. The last thing we saw on national TV, the whole world – watched Maryland get trounced at home by Iowa. The entire country just watched Ohio State beat the dog mess out of Rutgers. I'm going I'm flipping this over. Give me the points. Give me all those points. Give me Maryland. I'll just take my chances. That's it. I, I think this is one of those. One team looked really bad. One team looked really good. We're not going to see that this weekend. Game will be closer. It might be a 14-point game. It might be a 17-point game. Don't think it'll be a 21-point game. Give me the Terps. In the last game of the rapid fire, which I didn't really go very rapidly, Michigan State's going to Rutgers. I love Rutgers. I, I can't I can't figure out why I like this team so much. They're not good. It's not because they're good, okay? So I, I can't get, get made fun of for being a bandwagon guy. Um, I, I think they're fun to watch. Now, they were bad this weekend. That wasn't fun at all to watch. I think this game will be much, much closer. But I don't care. What Mel Tucker is doing at Michigan State is pretty incredible. Pretty unbelievable. They're laying five points. I said it last weekend. I'll say it this weekend. When you play good defense and you run the football and you don't turn the ball over – and you don't commit penalties. I don't know if you can see my hands. That's four important things that kind of travel well. And it keeps you in games all the time. And it helps you continue to stay on top of bad teams. It keeps you close with good teams. I'm going to lay the points. I'm going to take the Michigan Wolverine. Uh, Wolverine. Woo. Michigan Wolverines I took in the last one. Don't hate me, Michigan State folks. I know that's an insult to you. I'm taking the Michigan State Spartans, and I'm I'm going to lay the points here against my, my University of uh, New Jersey Rutgers. I, uh, I'm going against what I would normally do. I can't talk right now. I'm, I'm all discombobulated. I apologize. We're going to move into my picks. I'm giving you five winners this week. I went one and four last week, guys. One and four. I'm I'm terrified that eventually we're just going to come completely off the damn tracks and I'm going to go over. So far, so far, I've, I've had I've had one bullet hit every week. We're going to stay on that track. We're going to get five good ones right here. Notre Dame's going to Vitek. Look, guys, I don't care who the quarterback is. I think all three of them are fine. I think they're all good. I think this defense will travel. Let me. Let, this is the truth of the matter. Okay, I love Justin Fuente. I, I I I watched him change the the life of the Memphis football program. Okay, it was garbage. It was trash before he got here, and now now they are a respect. Well, they were until last weekend a respectable football program. All right, and he did that. He, he put them on the map, and, and it lasted two and a half coaches, depending on if Silverfield can figure this thing out. I, I'm going to get off that in a minute. Brian Kelly is not losing two games in a row, guys. Brian Kelly is not losing two games in a row. He's going to go out to Virginia Tech, and he's going to kick the crap out of somebody, all right? This is a guy that's got a good offensive line. He's got a great defensive front. They're going to give Vitek some fits, and they're showing up to bring the lumber, and they're going to bring it okay i i like fuente i like vatek i don't think they're winning this one give me the irish gotta win straight up that's all i need no points michigan to nebraska talked about it earlier you ride or tushy bucks you or you don't ride at all guys 
I've been riding Michigan all year, and I'm not getting off this train. They've won. They've covered. They're going to keep winning. They're going to keep covering. Big Red, don't scare me. Take Michigan. Lay the three and a half. Red River rivalry, guys. Texas is the better football team. This is this line is just wrong. It's just clearly wrong. Texas is a better football team. Texas is going to win this game outright. You take those points, put a little money on the on a, on a, on the money line, and you'll be happy. Hey, this is a team that I didn't think was going to catch points the rest of the year. Okay, they caught a couple of points at Memphis a couple of weeks ago before they won. UTSA. Now UTSA is going to Western Kentucky. Now Western Kentucky has been good, and Western Kentucky has been really impressive. I, I think this UTSA team might be the second best team in the state of Texas, guys. I get three-point head start. I know I'm on the road. Didn't matter. Don't, I think this team travels well. I think they're well coached. I can't believe, <clears throat> excuse me, goodness gracious, I'm getting excited. I cannot believe I'm catching more than a field goal with UTSA right now. Give me the points. Give me the road runners, baby. We're rolling. And then lastly, <clears throat> I didn't cough enough. Because I kind of want to throw up a little bit. But I'm making a gambling pick because I need a win. Give me the tide. Laying 17 and a half. I've never wanted to lose a game and lose a bet so bad. I don't need the money that badly. But I think they're the better football team. I think they're going to win the game. And I think they're going to beat the hell out of Texas A&M. Because I don't know how Texas A&M scores. Elaine Kiffin struggled to score until it got into garbage time. And that old Miss offense is heads and shoulders better than this Texas A&M offense. I don't care where the game's being played. I just don't. The line is not enough points. So I hope the Tide wins. Well, I don't hope they win. I'm going to bet on them to win one. Okay. And if I lose the ticket, hell, I've won. I've lost a lot all year. I appreciate you joining me tonight. Thank you so much. I, sorry, I, I, I've lost the ability to talk. I apologize about that. Your, your opinion matters to me. Leave me some comments. Hit the thumbs up button, even though I sounded like a ridiculous moron tonight. And tell me what you think. Tell me what games you like. I didn't hit all of them. So from the Tuesday night show, Wednesday night show, what time? Monday night show comes out. From the Wednesday night show comes out. Any game I didn't hit on, leave comments about them. I'll hit them on our live show Saturday morning. That is my favorite 30 minutes. That's my favorite half hour of my week, spending with you guys, getting ready for football. Fall is in the air. This Saturday is going to be an awesome, awesome Saturday. And uh, and I'll see you then for sportsbookreview.com. My name is Christopher Giannini. See you next time.